Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another amazing creation from the Steam Workshop. Now, this is the Vidarium A150 Super Cruiser, and this really does put the Super in Cruiser. This has got so much firepower, so many little nooks and crannies and details. You're going to be blown away by the detail and firepower of this craft. So we're going to start with our usual external tour, starting at the front of the ship, and then we'll work our way on inside. And there's a lot to see. Now, at the front here, you'll notice just how smooth the armor blocks look. And that is because the only mod that's been used on this ship, surprisingly, is the armor edgeless mod. So there's no edges to the armor. And I'm a big fan of this mod because it makes the blocks look a lot smoother and stops the ships from being quite blocky but if you didn't want to use that mod this ship is fully compatible with that as well so having a look at these lovely sloped intakes that's what they kind of remind me of with these vented armor door blocks they slope black back exposing the artillery cannons now what's really cool about these rows of artillery cannons is you'll see that they are actually all staggered off so they'll actually have great firing potentials and firing solutions on various crafts as they approach from different angles and if that wasn't enough the under deck as well is full with a repeat, so it's it's kind of symmetrical on the top and bottom. So if you get yourself into a position like this off the side of this in your ship, you'd be torn apart. Now this ship is very capable as well. It's got a forward firing rotary. Well, I say rotary, it's just laid out in this rotary mechanism to get the most firepower possible. So I believe this is 16 rail guns and you might be counting them and go that, that doesn't look like 16 well with this hinge and rotor staggering system you can see the rest of them are located back here now you might be thinking oh these could get damaged and ripped off well that's been thought out as well because we have projectors in this section as well that can be activated and project and repair itself how fantastic that's really cool now you can see some logos tucked in the side there and also this red pillar that is projected down the front and this is an aiming device for the railgun in this area as well you'll notice that there's a selection of small interior turrets now these interior turrets are going to cover you in case any engineers get into this area and try disabling perhaps your railguns in that section now across the top here you'll notice these little gray beads that have been put across as well as this white black and orange stripes that kind of just really fit in with this yellow ship i don't know about you guys but something about bright colored ships in space engineers just really suits the dark abysses of space of course it's not great for being spotted but this ship is it's, it's glorious it's beautiful this color just makes it really work so let's move into this rear segment of this ship now you're going to notice at first we've got a lot more sort of intake areas of design as well as the armor seems to slope and curve into each other as well as overlap that just looks fantastic now in this section we have ourselves four railgun turrets and just check this little camera out here so this is a, a little button that they've placed the camera on the top of there for that sort of interesting looking range finder it almost looks like a periscope from a tank so they've got a turret there and a turret located at the back and mixed in between here we have some other little detailed items we've got this little camera sort of mini ball here i'm guessing this is some sort of reconnaissance device perhaps some zoom camera I'm not too sure what that is, but it certainly looks very cool. And then we've got the interior turrets tucked away in here as well. We've got various different segments of detailing coming across this whole area with that little Tron orange stripe there as well, giving it further detail as well. So coming along the side here, we have got these little cells that pop out to the side. Now, I'm not too sure that these serve much of a function. They have got some thrusters that seem to be in the side there, but they just add to that detail. And then you've got that very, uh, is, it, is it wrong to say? that anime sort of flick that you see in a lot of anime style ships so very very cool i really like how that's angled up there and it just slowly retracts itself in it's got these other sort of i can't even describe what these little fins are they little fins that come off but it all curves into this section and the resistance we have the engine thruster bay look at the detailing going on here originally i thought this was a mod look at that it looks like a modification doesn't it but no each one of these engines has been detailed with a small ship with hinges on to create that thrust. That thrust nozzle at the back, that is spectacular. The time and effort to create that curve around there, it really needs to be acknowledged. And then we've got the rest of the detailing within this thruster housing. 
So there's four of them engines, two small and one large with all that detailing on. There must be plenty of subgrids. Now, if we go down underneath here, you'll notice we've got more areas as well, as well as these little cheeky missile turrets that I really like. They remind me of Dalek heads for some reason, but I think they could be quite lethal. Missile launchers always cause quite a stir in space engineers. And down here we have this lower section. Not too sure what that is, but you can see it's got these little laser antennas tucked into each one of these balls here. Maybe it's some sort of reconnaissance pod or whatnot of scouting different areas. More little thrust pods and we have got more railgun turrets here as well. Now in this section, you'll notice we have missiles or some sort of missile device. You can see that they're tucked in here. Hydrogen missiles that launch out of the bottom in these little tubes. Very, very cool look at them so you've got six of them on each side staggered to fire they've got a long distance to clear from the ship but if that all worked on wired up you know, i wonder how, how well that would work in a battle something we might have to test out in a future video as we can see here we've got the bridge of the ship now so we've got two bridges we've got one on either side and my guess is that these are just kind of a what i'd say is like a a viewing platform the real bridge is going to be bunkered down somewhere in a command and control center but from here you can do some nice piloting and they've got a cool little display here of the ship as well oh actually this is another one of the ships another one of the ships the oxide now coming to the side here something i didn't cover was the actual logo and detailing on the side and there we go the vendarium 2 look at that anniversary really nice letter in that Something about space engineers' text, making text out of space engineers' blocks and making it smooth. That's just very, very appealing to the eye. Anyway, that is the externals of this ship done. The only further detail that I want to show you out here is look at this little radar and antenna that we've got cycling up here, as well as the, all the various communication boys. Very ship-like. Look at them little antennas at the back. And then it ramps down to a serial number there as well. Very cool. Let's go inside and check out what the ship has to offer. So now that we're inside, we're going to start up at the bridge. And this is the view you have from that command and control center. Just imagine all them guns firing on deck. That would be absolutely beautiful. Let's keep going. So down here, we've got a little viewing area to a lower deck, various different buttons to activate the various turret systems. Each of the turret systems actually got a picture added to the various screens. Fantastic level of detail there. And as we come down to this area, like we said before, we've got a little ship on display. And we've got various little control seats here with little graphs and layouts. Each one of these being de detailed and something added to them that, that you don't see in a lot of designs. Coming through here, there's some corridors on the side. And then we can enter into the rear area of this cockpit or bridge area. Now this is where you actually spawn in this world. And it just gives you a little bit of information saying that there's no scripts available in this world. And please enjoy the ship. So we've got a nice control panel here at the back. We can actually enter ourselves into the rear areas. We've got a med bay over on this side with some nice jump drives behind them. And then we come over and down to this side and we've got this rear door that opens up. And we can start moving through the interior. So as we move through the interior here, we've got these various different access doors that take us to production. I like this production area, how it's got the new production refineries. It's also got like these little medical bay um, accessories from the DLC. And these kind of look like little workbenches. Very nice detail, very compact interior as well. We've got various battle ports to stop people from boarding the ship. Something that a lot of players don't think about. It make it quite easy once you get inside. And then we've got access to repair the rear thrusters if we need to do so. So I thought I'd show you another entrance way. So we're actually down at the side of the ship here. We've got this little door that opens up to this little maintenance airlock. I really like the idea of this. You've got this maintenance tunnel that's designed, obviously, so the astronaut or the engineer can actually float through the tunnel. And then as they come through that airlock, they enter into this centralized area with a little bit of wood for of detailing as well. As we enter in through here, more airlocks, nothing like a load of airlocks that delay a boarding activity and stop you from suffocating. So more defensive stations, We've got some more logos down in this area. But you can see we can actually start to navigate through the center of the ship here as well if we wish to. So let's pop out another one of these doors and start doing a little bit of navigating. I'm not going to close every airlock behind me because I'll be going insane. And you can see we've got the jump drive in this little airlock section. And we'll continue through various doors. So we've got cryo storage here for all the crew members. Now this, this ship ideally would probably have a lot of crew members aboard. 
Now, with the amount of airlocks in this ship, it did take me quite a bit of time to navigate through, so I thought I'd just also flick through with the spectator camera and show you some of the other rooms. Um, because we've got the, all the airlocks to open, it just took quite a bit of time. So we've got back to the cryopods in that section. We've got storage over here with various stores of barricades and other equipment and systems. And as we continue working through here, we've got this little medical room. Lots of detail, lots of going on in these rooms, but I like how they've kind of created these little corner areas with the use of the jump drive. Continue flying through a little further. You can see we've got another bunk, multiple stories going up there to the top. And as we continue leading through, that'll lead us back through to the other side. It's quite a, a vast interior. It's quite complicated. And I feel like I, I've already got myself lost in here a few times. We've got like a lower control room in this section here with the same sort of jump drive layout that I think is quite cool. And as we continue working our way through, we should start to see some of the similar rooms because we're, we're on the other side of the ship now. So there we go. Push ourselves through there and back into the reactor room so it is time for our test flight and we have just dropped below 30 frames our acceleration let's have a look at it on the bottom left is is not too bad we are accelerating we've still got that sort of aircraft carrier um, speed acceleration where we're, we're piloting a big heavy ship gyroscopic turning is much better than the carrier that we piloted the other week we can actually move left and right even though when i'm pulling the, the stick to the right now it's still taking time to move over but that's what you've got to expect when driving one of these big ships these big ships they rely on their firepower and just moving in one direction um, they're not nimble fighters and it's important to understand that when you're building a big ship like this like these artillery turrets on the front will deter plenty of players players won't even want to confront you if you've got this many artillery turrets but still they will look for blind spots in a design like this to try and attack and i do feel one of the weak spots of this ship is probably towards the rear but still this ship's probably not even meant for fighting it's just a beautiful design that's super fun and incorporates all of this builder's talent into this design real nice indeed so we're slowly getting up to 20 meters a second after holding this for probably about 20 seconds but there we go another lovely ship there'll be a link down to this in the workshop below and i also you recommend that you check out this creator's other designs as well there is plenty of really cool stuff on their workshop anyway thanks for watching and i will see you next time